Welcome back, guys. Welcome to Metasploit. Now, in this video series, guys, I'm going to be talking about, like the way we did with the Active Directory penetration testing, we're going to be talking about Metasploit. Now, I know, guys, most of you know what is Metasploit, but, but, but for newcomers, Metasploit is the platform, the comprehensive, the all-in-one platform for doing penetration testing or between parentheses or quotes, hacking. Okay. I'm going to divide the video series, guys, into multiple videos where we're going to be using Metasploit. We're going to discover the various modules, how to use Metasploit. And in addition, we're going to apply practical scenarios. Now, for practical scenarios, I'm using here in the next box, I'm using Metasploitable 2 to do our experiments. So let's get started. Now, all of you, know, all of you guys know how to start Metasploit. So using MSF console in the command line, we start Metasploit, all right? Now, if you are using Metasploit for the first time, uh, I advise you guys to check if it is uh, running or not by typing sudo systemctl and start post sql Now, while we do that, post sql is a prerequisite for Metasploit to work. So if you, this is the first time you work on Metasploit, you want it to make sure that everything is set up and running before running Metasploit. So first, start the PostgreSQL and then enable PostgreSQL uh, to at the boot up. So basically we type sudo ctl and then we type enable means that we will put this we will put post sql service to start at the boot time post re sql now every time you start your uh, linux or kali linux box you don't need to type the command again again all right so basically that's first second make sure guys all the time you update metasploit frequently because the platform is uh, you know it gets updated uh, from uh, on you know, on a regular basis. So we need to make sure that we have the latest update of all the modules. So we do that by making sure everything is updated. We issue the following command, sudo apt install metasploit framework. We hit enter and we update the framework. And after that, you are up and you can, you can get started. And let's get started with metasploit. Now, the first practical example in this video, guys, we're going to be using Metasploit to scan the open ports on the box Metasploitable. So it means that if you uh, if you manage to compromise a network or a host on your client machine and you wanted to issue uh, an NMAP scan, you don't need to head into a total separate terminal. You just can do that from within Metasploit. So basically, for Metasploit, we need to use something called the modules. So to activate a module, we enter use. So the keyword or the word used means we activate a module. So we enter use followed by the module name. In our case, we want to do port scanning. So we do auxiliary scanner port scan TCP, right? So here, when we hit enter, Fail to load the module. Thank you so much. Auxiliary. Oh, I think I typed double L and I have typo here. I'm sorry, guys. I am sorry. Mm. My English is horrendous today. All right, so now we are inside the module scanner port scan. If you by mistake, if you by mistake like hit a module and you want it to go back, you just type back. Back, it means we exit the module. We get out of the module, we move out the, uh, of the module, right? Now, let's go back to the module and let's say, or let's go back. Okay, forget about this. Now we have a, command called previous. Now previous 
gets me back to the previous model I have used. Suppose that I am using more than one module, scanner, uh, interpreter. So if I want to move from one module back to the previous module, I type previous, which puts me back at the latest module I have been at. So it is saying there isn't a previous model at the moment. Why? Because this is the first model I am starting, I am hitting is scan and port scan, and there is no previous model uh, right now, right? So previous doesn't work. Previous works when you hit multiple models and you want to go back to the latest model you have been at. All right, now we are at scanner port scan TCP. Now, how how to do how to use a specific module, guys? So since we are in a port scanning, we want to use we want to know what are the required parameters to initiate a port scan. So once you are in the module, when you type use scanner, when you type uh, use and the module name, you can use show options. Show options displays the parameters uh, uh, that are mandatory, and some of them are not mandatory uh, in order for you to fill out to start the mo uh, module to run, right? So basically, most modules require the options, these options, guys, before they can be run. We can configure these options with two words, set, right, to set, like, for example, I want to set our host, our host. Uh, oh, let's find the IP address. Okay, we didn't run. Okay, let me run an MAP scan. S, uh, N, and the network IP. Let me make sure that I enabled the NAT in the settings. I don't want to restart the virtual machine actually. Oh, bridged. And this is in bridged. It is not, so it's not going to work now. So let's stop this and switch to NAT. You know, the two boxes need to be on the same network operational mode, either NAT or bridged. So now if config. I'm still on NAT, I'm still on bridge, I know it's the network uh, card is restarting. Okay, let's make sure now we are on NAT. All right, now let's run in map scan. See what is the IP address of Metasploitable. So I got 94.2. Okay, so this is the IP of the Metasploitable box. So we take this IP, guys, and we go back to the Metasploit box. We set the First parameter, set our hosts 192.168.94.134, right? Right. Okay. All right. Now the second is ports. We need to uh, define what are the ports we are interested in scanning. Now, in during a penetration test, if the client has a specified what are the ports uh, included in the scope of the plan, you need to set only the ports that the client wants to scan. Don't scan all the ports, right? You are, we are not in a city for challenge here. Okay, so we set ports to, let's say, uh, 22, 25, 80, uh, 3386, or forget about this. Uh, 119 and 21. All right, now we have set the ports. Now, suppose that you have made a mistake in setting the ports. You can back off and cancel this value by using unset. Now, unset, we clear the value of the parameter that we mistakenly have defined. So, unset ports, what will we do? Show options. So, here you see the R host have been set. Now the ports have been cleared. Why? Because I cleared the values I have entered, right? Now let's go back and set them back. Ports 22.25.80.21. And let's make sure we entered everything correctly. Show options. There, as you can see, I have set the ports and I have set the parameters. Now let's see what we have here. Concurrency, you don't need to do that. Delayed, jitter, threats. You can set the threats if you want to control uh, the speed of the scanning. You can set the threats, how many threats uh, are to be used by the CPU. So let me set 
threads to three, right? Now we want now to run the scanning, right? So right now we are running kinda end map scan, mini end map scan, right? Let's let's see what will happen. Run. Okay, so here are the results of the scanning. We have 425 open, 80 open, 21 open, 22 open. Now we want, okay, now I have found the open ports. What about the services, right? I wanna know what's what's in there. I wanna resemble an map scan. So in Metasploit guys, there is something, the pre-SQL, if the post degree sql service is running, Metasploit will log findings and information about discovered hosts, services, uh, or the credentials in a convenient, accessible database. That's why you need to make sure that the post security database is running. Why? Because it stores your scan data. So in the following here, we're going to list the services by using services command. Database not connected. Look. <laughs> oh my God, I'm telling you what to do. I haven't done this. Okay, so let's make sure the uh, database is running. Uh, okay. So the stem ETL start post the SQL. So I think now it is running. Let me enable the uh, the start of this service on Buta. All right, let's go back. Services. Oh my God, no man, please. Okay, let's go back. Make sure that the database has username and password. So sudo msf um, db. Let's initialize the database. I, I was actually I thought that I have everything set up and running, but it's figured out I, I have mistaken. Database already started. Database appears to be already configured, skipping initialization. So why it is not running here? Services. It's not connected. Okay, I think I need to restart the uh, okay, let's go back. Let's go back here. And restart the metasploit. Okay, so use, oh my god, auxiliary, <laughs> uh, port scan, no, scanner, scanner, port scan, PCP, show options, set our hosts, 1.6894, set our port, no, port, Two two twenty five two one eighty most common ports right and one one nine yeah okay run services all right so here the services that are running on these ports so it's saying also protocol TCP so it's not saying that it is HTTP twenty five twenty one twenty one FTP was server. Now, so far, we have resembled mini Nmap scan. I know, guys, Nmap gives you more details, more in-depth uh, insights on what is running, the version of everything, the services, whatsoever. But here we're trying to um, do the things from the ground up. Okay. Now, we can, use, we can integrate Nmap with Metasploit. So basically, in addition to a simple TCP port scanner, we can also use the DP Nmap wrapper to execute Nmap inside the Metasploit and save the findings to the post degree SQL database for easy of access and for easy of use. The DP Nmap command, guys, has identical syntax to Nmap uh, when it is used as a separate tool. So to initialize Nmap from Metasploit, we type DP Nmap. So here it's saying, how we can use Nmap with Metasploit. So here, guys, the syntax is nearly the same. 
The only thing different is the naming. So instead of nmap, you type dp nmap, and here we specify the syntax. It costs the same when you use nmap independently, right? So in my case, let's type the IP address, 24, and here we type aggressive scanning. Let's start. So here we are scanning um, the metasploitable box, or in your case, it could be your client box, right directly, right off the bat from Metasploit, right? You don't need to launch in map again. And use the same syntax as I told you guys. So here, as you can see, it says nmap options. So you can use TLS scan, UDB scan, uh, TCP scan. You can escape the firewall whatsoever. But here I'm using a test box, and you can go back to my nmap. Uh, I have outlined, I've made a video about nmap scanning and how to evade firewall. You can go back to that video and get an enlightenment about how to evade firewalls. Okay, so here is the scan or the result of nmap scan. First, as you can see, I have port 21 open, the service FTP, and the version, right? And it's saying anonymous login is allowed. Okay, the second one is, you know, SSH and the version, Telnet, SMTP, and the RPC bind, NetBIOS, MySQL, a whole lot of word to hack, right? All right. Now, if you are scanning a network instead of an IP address and you want to know what are the discovered hosts, you type hosts and you can see the host that you have just scanned, the address, the IP, the operating system, and the purpose. What is the role of this box? Is it a server or is the client? You know. Okay, guys. So, so far we have covered how to use Metasploit from the ground up, use the modules, and discovered how to use Metasploit as an nmap scanning tool, right? In the next video, we're going to talk deeply about the payloads, the auxiliary modules, how to create backdoors, whatsoever, all in the purpose of penetration testing, of course. <laughs> all right, guys. So I hope you like this, and we see you in the next video.